Hello again, everybody. I'm starting another project. This is my brother's <laughs> brothers. I'm all hung up on my brothers. This is my son's 2003 Maxima, and the AC quit working on him. It was fine last season. It was weak at the beginning of this season. Tried the can recharge, and uh, it just wasn't going to go anywhere with it. So we took it to a a shop here in town. Pretty well known, reputable chain of auto mechanics, and they diagnosed it as having a leak in the high pressure line, a Schrader valve leak, and possibly bad compressor. And of course, I couldn't really check the EVAP without it doing anything, but there may be leaks in the EVAP. I'm starting simple. I ordered the new high pressure line because of course it has a Schrader valve built into it. And uh, if needed, I'm gonna take the hoses off from the compressor to the H block and replace the gaskets and uh, then try to do a recharge. Right now, I haven't done anything to it yet. I'm just doing a pressure test on it. I've got my vacuum pump on it. And it is been about five minutes. It's still holding 20 PSI in a vacuum, minus 20. So I'm gonna hold that for another 15, 20 minutes. And if that passes, then those leaks that wherever they diagnosed them as may not have been so severe that it should keep the system from operating throw some freon in it and uh, unfortunately if that's the case and the freon doesn't start working the system then it may very well be a bad compressor but you got to start with the cheap simple things first and that's what i'm doing it's been 30 minutes and it is still holding perfect vacuum which is a good and a bad thing so the next step is i'm going to go ahead and just because we already ordered one I'm going to go ahead and replace the receiver dryer just as maintenance and put the vacuum back on it and then do a recharge and well, hopefully the compressor will kick on it'll start working but if it doesn't given that it's now apparent that there are no significant leaks in the lines or the H block evap condenser or wherever then unfortunately if it doesn't work it's probably the compressor and uh, we'll just have to take it from there Okay, so we got the stuff to recharge. It's been over an hour, still holding great vacuum. Whenever you do this, you gotta make sure you see the capacity of your compressor. It'll be on a sticker, it's not necessarily green, but it will be should be somewhere, and it'll tell you how many pounds or kilograms of refrigerant it'll hold. And the standard can, I think, I think they were 16, 12. So 12 ounces in a standard can here. This holds 1.16 pounds, which is, about what 18 19 ounces so we'll need about one and a half cans of freon for a full recharge and then uh, we'll just hook it up through the service side of your uh, gauge set now when you hook this up you got to have the adapter for the can it'll puncture the top and then but before you charge it you want to make sure you bleed uh, just not saying this out loud for the environmental people, but you got to bleed a little bit of Freon out of this line before you open the side gauge to make sure any air that's in the line is gone. You've still got good vacuum. So I'm going to get all this set up and we'll put in this. Um, my experience long time ago, I was AC, auto AC certified. And usually the first can will go in the entire system just off the vacuum you've built with the compressor without the car running. And then you start the car, let the system start to roll and suck in the rest till it's full. So we'll see how much goes in on this first uh, can and we'll just add it from there. Okay, so after we got one and basically one and a half cans of Freon in it, Pressures are good, high side pressure is fine, just a tick under 200, or low side pressure is sitting at 34, 35. All I have is a kitchen scale to measure how many ounces I got out of each can, and I'm not confident that the conversion's right. Um, plus a change of state from a liquid to a gas, so volumetrically I'm not sure, so I just kind of guessed on half a can of the second one. And that should be about 18-ish ounces total in the system right now. 
it's blowing cold, which it obviously wasn't doing before, or we wouldn't be here. So at idle, it's got a decent temperature coming out of the vents. And we're gonna, I'm gonna leave it like this, and uh, hopefully, obviously it'll be something that has to be monitored over the next few days. Um, I don't wanna overcharge my pressure. I'm gonna leave at least uh, 10, 15 pounds of overhead for expansion when he's out in the sun, the highway driving around. You just definitely don't wanna overcharge these things, even though right now it may be a little bit undercharged, it's, it's working. So we'll leave the pressures where they're at and he'll drive it for a few days. Hopefully it'll just stay the way it is. That vacuum held well over an hour. I recharge, I revacuumed it again after I put the receiver dryer on it, and then he, we had to run for adapters for my gauge set to get the cans filled. That took time, and it held vacuum the entire way. He took it to that shop, like I said, and they quoted the most, like 1,100 bucks, upwards of 1,100 dollars to fix this system, and course a lot of that's labor but they also had the compressor as part of that repair and ev evap uh, I've seen zero indications that either one of those things are bad right now just based upon looking visually for leaks where the peg oils come out and it's gotten grimy the compressor kicked right on after the first can uh, there was no he hesitation in that um, we'll see so hopefully this is a cheap maybe hundred hundred fifty dollar fix didn't even put the new high side hose on it. That could well save it. Well, I won't send it back, but um, that wasn't even necessary. Just got a new receiver dryer on it. And we'll see where it goes from here. So don't trust the shop. If you can, or you know somebody who can double check, just like a doctor, get a second opinion. See you later. Okay, <laughs> quick update. I don't want to get too close to it because there's still a fog of 134 going on here. Um, it is the return line from the uh, evap to the condenser. I don't know if you can see that little fog going on right there with the Freon and Peg oil getting atomized. But uh, yeah, what happened was this cold air intake right here had been laying on top of that line. It's a metal line that had been laying on top of vibrating and it just wore a freaking hole in it. Unbelievable. But the interesting is, interesting thing is, the shop he took to, did you pay him for that? Yeah. How much did you pay him? He paid a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars to this repair shop, and I ought to name them because before I was like, you know what, benefit of the doubt, whatever. But I really ought to name them. They did not find this leak, this audible hissing leak in the system. Unbelievable. So anyway, um, going to look into finding the hose, the pipe to repair that and or get a repair kit maybe it can be flared and then a compression fit um, as a repair i don't know i'll have to look into it right now um, just a little disgusted at the whole situation it was working too and there was just a pin 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 hole in it but then uh, we heard the telltale just slight hiss or he did and when under investigation sure enough there it is so anyway his ac is not going to work for a while and uh for figure out a repair We'll get that done, and I will post that as part of this video. Bye. Okay, it's the next day. I'm working on the AC fiasco. These are the repair products I'm going to try before I go ahead and buy the whole new liquid line, which it's not expensive. I think found one, a brand new one, for around $70. It's just going to be a pain in the butt to replace because it literally wraps the entire engine bay from the condenser all the way to the H block on the passenger side. We're going to try this um, JB weld, then a piece of hose over the welded point with two clamps side by side to really press down on it. And the weld is already on there. So I catch it right there. And you got to let that cure for two hours. It's going to be three to four hours for it to totally set. But after two, I want it to be just ductile enough that when I wrap that piece of hose over it and put the clamps on it, it has some squish to really press it down into that hole. And from that point, we'll give it the, ex the next hour of the cure time and then go ahead and do the charge on it. With any luck, it'll hold. Um, if it just gets through this one season this summer, I mean, he's pretty much due for a new car anyway. This was his high school car. He's a sophomore in college now. Junior, sorry, going on his junior year. 
we did do some things to it. We did, when we first got it, we put some lowering springs on it and then we got the vented, drilled, slotted, blah, blah. Get up in here, I don't know if you can see the spring, but we got some teen lowering springs on it. The stance is great. I mean, the car is, it looked really good when it was not in its current shape. But uh, yeah, it's just the college beater right now. And hopefully we can chill this air down for them and get them through the summer. And I'll catch back up with you here in a few hours. Okay, we've just recharged it. The compressor's fine. Again, everything is nice and nice and cold through the vents. It took just the right amount of Freon. That's where we're suspecting, just or expecting. There's no suspects anymore. They're guilty. And this is where we're expecting to see any leaks if they appear. Let's see, it got the hose clamps and that hose around the JB well doubled up and super tight. I've heard nothing so far. By this time yesterday, I think it was already pissing. It was when this got moved, jostled, and it was laying on top of that pipe that the leak expressed itself yesterday. So it's so, so small, but as you know, with any liquid or gas, it's gonna find a hole if it's there, and that's what happened. So with a bunch of JB weld, rubber, two hose clamps, hopefully this is gonna fix it. So, We'll just keep watching on it, get my uh, gauges disconnected and let it sit overnight. And when he drives it in the morning, it'll pretty much be the tell. If it's going to leak, it's going to do it right now. There's no reason for it to leak in the future. That JB weld's only going to get stronger as it cures more. So if it fixes it now, it should be fixed for good. So there you go. Um, I'll let you know if anything else happens.